Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Simpkins Physics Corner. It's your favorite fast-talking physics fanatic. But today, I'm going to slow things down a little bit so we can hash out some of the details when we look at equilibrium and a system. In this case, one moving at a constant speed. That would be equilibrium. Let's take a look at a suitcase filled with garlic bread. All right, and we are getting ready to internationally ship this, so we're going to be pulling it through the airport at a constant speed. This term means that we are in equilibrium, which means the forces in all directions are balanced. Let's see what that means as we continue. The handle of the suitcase makes an angle of 50 degrees. All right, so kind of a steep one there. I'm just going to draw this to kind of indicate which way it's going. 50 degrees with respect to the horizontal direction. If you pull with a force of 4 newtons, Parallel to the handle, that means in the direction of the handle, of course. Uh, what is the force of friction acting on the suitcase? What? Okay, well, I'm going to change colors here because I don't really like that I drew that red line there. So, in fact, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. In fact, let me, I guess I'm going to have to redraw the whole thing. Sounds good. That's okay because I didn't like that diagram anyway. Because when we draw forces, we want a free body diagram. We want to draw the force here, which is the, we'll call that the applied force. Now, you're like Mr. Simpkins. That's not in one of our four forces that we defined. I know, this is the catch-all. I mean, technically, could you call it a tension force? Sure, knock yourself out if you like. But this one is gonna be, of course, the force of gravity. Then we're gonna have the normal force of the floor pushing up on the suitcase. And then it says we have some friction to contend with. So I'm gonna draw that kind of like this because friction acts between the bottom of the suitcase and the floor. That's why I kind of drew it kind of low there. Let's take a look at the directions of all these forces, though, because equilibrium, by definition, is when all the forces are balanced in every direction. Well, how many forces are there in every direction? And what do we mean by that? Well, we mean horizontal and vertical. And if we can take a scenario and break the forces into the vertical and horizontal directions, then we can kind of take stock of what everything is going on. So you, the thing that's tricky about this problem, I'm going to draw the vertical forces as red. You see the normal and the gravitational force. I'm going to draw, but the thing about pulling up on the suitcase here is that we're pulling up and we're pulling to the right. So we're pulling kind of up and we're pulling kind of to the right. Now, if I can manage to continue drawing this without literally erasing the entire drawing, which it looks like I'm going to be able to do, you can see that this FA, this applied force, has an upward component and a rightward component. Okay, so the forces are kind of all over the place here. But, of course, the, the applied forces to the right, friction opposes motion as we defined it before. And so if we look really carefully here, let's kind of redraw this. Let's consider the horizontal forces we're working with. Well, we're going to have the X component of the applied force. I'll call it FAX. That's because we're pulling up and to the right, but I just want to focus on the rightward part. And we're going to have the force of friction to the left. Now, since this problem says we're moving at a constant speed, what we can be certain of is that that means these two forces must be equal. Why? Because we're moving at a constant speed. And so with the FA here, all right, the applied force, if that's the angle theta, then this would be the adjacent side. Or you can remember y sine, x cosine. The FA, the component of the applied force times the cosine of theta, is going to be equal to the force of friction. Okay, the question says, what's the force of friction? Uh, wow, this is a really easy problem. I didn't realize how easy this problem was, okay? I thought we were going to have to do all kind of crazy stuff. And this is why this problem's easy, is because it told us what the applied force was, and it told us what the angle was. And so the only thing that we needed to pay attention here is that the force of friction is horizontal, and that's going to be balanced with the horizontal component of the applied force. And so because they give us so much beautiful information, all I have to do is make sure my calculator is in degree mode. And I would do 4 cosine 30, and that would get me a force of friction of 3.46 newtons. Cool. Wow, that was way shorter than I thought it would be. Uh, down the road, just to give you a heads up, sometimes we're not going to know so much information. Sometimes Zac Efron won't bless us with his garlicky presence. And so in that case, uh, we may have to consider sometimes the other direction. So let me just give you a little, a little expression to think about. Well, the applied force is to the right, but it's also upwards. So there's some F-A-Y, right, the vertical component of the uh, force we're exerting on the suitcase handle. But that is actually going in the same direction as the normal force, right? Both of them are upward. But then the force of gravity is going to be going down on the suitcase. And that might get us an expression that looks something like this. FAY plus FN equals FG. Right? Many people 
get burned by these types of problems because as you pull up and to the right, they forget to include the Y component of that applied force when looking at the vertical direction. So I'm gonna leave this one here and I'll probably refer back to this garlic bread suitcase problem in the future when we get to more complicated problems complicated systems, especially if crazy things happen, like we start accelerating or something, all right? But I hope you appreciated the slow-mo Simpkins physics corner to kind of slow things down, break it down for you here. And if you're in my AP crew, I'll see you guys in uh, 10 minutes on the Zoom. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Simpkins in the Simpkins physics corner. Sayonara.